What? Diagnosed with uh, um, male breast cancer, and it's 9-11 related. I'm gonna come down to our, our other league. Two days after that, I got sick, called him back, and I said, how, how sick are you? He says, I think I have the COVID. My name is John Mormando. I'm a commodities broker for RJ O'Brien in Times Square here in New York City. Uh, in 9-11, I was working for BNP Paribas on the floor of the New York Mercantile Exchange uh, when, when the towers came down. Uh, at the time, we were told that there were no health risks. Uh, Christy Todd Whitman and the EPA uh, informed everyone that they did uh, the proper tests and that the air quality was okay to work. So, of course, we believed them. And here I am 17 years later, and I have now uh, been diagnosed with uh, um, male breast cancer, and it's 9-11 related. So I was diagnosed in March of 2018. I immediately started seeing doctors and got some second opinions, and I started, uh, see, let's say, I, I had my surgery in April, so one month later I had, I had uh, my surgery, and then I started uh, chemotherapy a month after that. That lasted until about October, from May to October. And then in November, I took a month off in between the chemo, and then in November I started radiation, and that was for six straight weeks, five days a week. Uh, and then after that, I took another few months off, and then they gave me a PET scan, which shows if there's any active cancers, and I, got a, I was clean. So in April of 2019, one year, basically one year after my ordeal started, mm -hmm. uh, I got a clean bill of health and I've been in remission. I think my having chemo and, and my radiation definitely did something to my immune system. Mm -hmm. um, so having that compromised immune system and also the, the other things that I have probably uh, caused me to have it a little worse than some people did. Uh, I, as, my, as it progressed, my wife decided, you know, we have to go to the hospital. We went to the hospital, they did x-rays, they saw I had pneumonia. Mm -hmm. And as soon as they saw that, and they saw my other symptoms, and I had 102 fever, they said, okay, you probably, you know, most likely have coronavirus. Mm -hmm. So they, they uh, admitted me into the hospital uh, on like March 12th, and I stayed there for a full week. Um, at one point, they wanted to put me on a ventilator, and I refused, because I didn't want to be put into a coma. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to be with, you know, with a tube down my throat. Um, and I just told the guys, the, the doctor, doctors and the nurses there, I said, please, let, just, just stay with me. Let me get through this. Uh, I was shaking like a leaf. I had the chills. I had 102, 103 fever. It was awful. But about an hour after, after they wanted to induce me, I came out of it. I felt better. And they were able to go. And three days later, I got home. So I think that might have been my peak. I think looking back at it now and all the people that were dying on ventilators, I think that decision in hindsight, might have saved my life. When these things happen, there's two things you can do. You can either go in your room, crawl up in a ball and cry, and say, why me? Or you can say, you know what? This isn't gonna affect me. I'm gonna, I'm gonna fight. I have a family, I have a son, and I, you know, I just, I just said to myself, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna let this get me down.